Are you a book buddy? Yes! I am. My name is Barb and I love books. Do you love books? Yes! Then you guys are in the right place today. So today, I'm not going to tell you exactly what the story's about. I'm going to let Herman help with that a little bit. So what does Herman have on? A scarf. A scarf. When do you wear a scarf? In the winter. In the winter, when it gets cold outside. What else happens sometimes when it gets cold? Animals hibernate. Right, and snow! it snows! Everybody grab a snowball! Yeah. yeah, it snows outside when it gets really cold where I live. So, oops, one more to Lucy. Hey, Fabulous, nope, we need one here. We, you, nope, we're just gonna have one each. Okay, we need, so here's need what's gonna one. happen. I need one. You got it. Got yours, Abby? So they're not real snow. If they were, they would be kind of like, remember what happened to? Peter in the snowy day? Yeah. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. And this isn't our story. We have another story about snow. So here it is. It's called First Snow in the Woods. And all of the illustrations here, they're actually photographs. So these folks, Carl R. Sams II and Jean Stoic, took all these pictures of these beautiful settings and they put them together in this book. Yes, Whoa. Aurora, what's up? This is nonfiction. Oh my gosh, you are brilliant. Yes, you are absolutely right. This is a non-fiction book. Fake because fake and fiction both start with the letter F. Okay, you guys are totally right. You are so on today. So yes, this is our, well, if this is non-fiction, what's this one? Fiction. This one was fiction. Brilliant. Okay, so are you ready for our story? Yes. Okay, but you remember what we have to bring when we listen? Where Stuffies. are they? Stuffies and dumb listening ears. Let's see them. Where are they? Did you bring them today? No. Yeah. Where are they? I okay. Did. Let me see those eyes. What? Fabulous. And remember, we have to Zip zipper it. the lippers. lippers. Okay. Are we ready to go? Mm -hmm. Wonderful. Light your, light your okay. So hang on to your snowballs. And what's going to happen? Oh, you want to fix that? Yes. Okay. Go right ahead. We lost the book, buddy. <laughs> we lost the one book, buddy. So here we go. We're going to keep going. That's good. She's coming back. I know she is. She wants to hear the story just like now. you do. Now, now, here's what you're going to do with your snowball. So when I'm reading and you have and hear the word snow, you're just going to go like this to this hand. Or if it's hard to do that, you're going to have your own little snow toss, okay? It's hard to do that, you can just hold your snowball up. But don't lose it. Hang on to it. I'm going to do something with it down the road. Are you ready? Mm -hmm. Okay. Are you all set? Yes. Fabulous. The northern lights faded bright to dim, like a distant torch flickering across the cold night sky. The owl had seen all this before, but something was different. Something told him tonight he must begin a long journey south. To see the silhouette of yeah. the owl? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A shadow? Almost like a shadow. In a morning meadow far away, fog tiptoed in without a sound. Dew sparkled on fragile webs where a deer of family grazed. A soft breeze crossed the meadow and whispered, Do you know what's happening? The spider spun her web and tidied up a fly into another tasty bundle. Does that sound very tasty to you? <gasps> no, they not me either. Blood. In the same meadow, a woolly bear inched his way along a fern, then onto another, chew, chew, chewing, doing what woolly bears do. Does that look like a woolly bear? No. No, that's the name of a particular caterpillar. So it's called a woolly bear caterpillar. A dragonfly waited patiently for his wings to dry. He had hatched during the midsummer green, long, long ago in dragonfly time. When will the new season begin? When dragonflies no longer fly. A noisy chipmunk broke the silence. Hey, Spotty, you don't look so good, he called out, munching a tiny red crab apple. You're losing your spots. And your coat is looking scruffy. Better start hiding your acorns, he warned. Why would I want to hide acorns, wondered the fawn. Acorns are everywhere. As the summer faded, the sweet nectar plants no longer flowered. Soon the monarch, type of butterfly, right? Soon the monarch would follow a distant memory. On fragile wings, his heart song would lead him to a tropical garden thousands of miles away. The hummingbird heard the same green song playing in his head, a gentle memory of a faraway place. The tiny traveler would leave the meadow that morning. See how big it is? Hold up your finger. Hummingbirds are almost just a little bit bigger than your finger. That's pretty tiny. It was a time of change. 
Dewy webs hung on goldenrod and covered the morning fields. So many woodland birds had left for distant places, taking their songs with them. At the edge of the woods, a small squirrel chattered. Have you heard, asked the red squirrel. The great gray owl is on his way from the far north. He only stays here during the harshest winters. The wind ruffled her fur as she snatched up a double acorn to tuck away. The first snow is coming. Yay, good, you have good memories. Move your snowball. A woodchuck squeezed out of his hole, blinking his eyes. I'm going to say this one time, announced the old grump. Hibernate, hibernate, hibernate. Did he say it just one time? No. No, he said, he said it three said times, it. three times. The sun melted the frost from the meadow, pushing away the fog and warming the shadows. Are you listening? Asked Mother Doe, standing quietly. It's happening. The frost had silenced the wings of the dragonflies. The new season is here, she bleated softly. I got a special sound for you. Ready? Mm -hmm. yep. yeah. What is that? Yeah. That's what a deer sounds like when they bleat. Can you do that? Yeah. 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 What is that? That's a little, little helper so we can hear exactly what a deer sounds like when it bleats. So what the mom's doing is she's talking to her baby. That's how they communicate. They bleat. Leaf by leaf, the green world gave way to blazing reds and golds. So what, what season is this? Fall. Fall. The painted turtle climbed onto a rock, warming himself in the fading rays of the sun. Soon I will bury myself into the thick mud and sleep until spring. It's what turtles do. A red maple leaf hung stubbornly, twisting and turning on its stem. Let it happen, nudged the breeze, and so it did. Breaking away soundlessly, floating down, twisting and turning, the fawn was paying attention. Looks like he has his listening skills, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. Right? Ears are big and wide. Eyes, show me those eyes. Fabulous. Why are the leaves falling? Why is my coat changing? Why have so many of the birds gone? Asked the fawn. All things change, Mother Doe spoke in a gentle voice. All creatures must prepare and be ready to follow their heart song. The fawn didn't really, didn't feel ready, didn't even have a heart song. Yet, as the evening slowly darkened the woods, he felt safe with his mother at his side. What's she doing? She's looking. Yeah, she's giving him a little bath. Each night stole more light from the day and held back the morning sun. Honking geese flew across the sky, announcing the changing season. The red. Yep, you are right. The raccoon poked his head out of a snug hole. Can you show me a raccoon? Show me those raccoon eyes? That's right. The raccoon poked his head out of a snug hole in a tree to listen to morning sounds and sniff the cool air. Sniff. Sniff. He'd hunted frogs and crayfish in the moonlight all along the muddy pond. At daybreak, he overturned rotted bark, finding plump grubs and runaway beetles. Again. Mm, no, thank you. His heart song played softly in his head. Can you feel it? It's coming. Good morning, good morning, said the two mice, peeking out from under the leaves. Today's the day, today's the day, they both agreed. Today is the day, questioned the fawn with frosted breath. I, I don't understand. What'd you say? Like the, like the frosted yes. breath. Yes. Do you ever have that happen when you go out in the cold and you can see your breath? It's true, it's true. I've heard it too. The great Great owl is on his way down from the far north, called out the chickadee dee. Are you ready, dee dee? Ready? Ready for what? Questioned the fawn as Mother Doe just kept munching her acorns. Mm. She's getting ready. The snowshoe hare balanced a white paw on a small tree as it chewed its tender needles. Soon her fur would be totally white. In winter, white is good. Suddenly a dark shadow soared above the rabbit's head. The great gray owl landed with ruffled feathers on the top of a swaying spruce. He had ridden the north winds many miles with a storm on his tail. Creatures of the forest, prepare. The first winter storm is here. But I'm not ready, said the fawn, standing all alone. The snow flakes, yes, floated downward, covering the meadow. What is happening? Why can't everything stay the same? The wind turned colder. And the snow fell harder. The fawn shook the wet snow from his ears. I don't like this, the robin agreed. He wished he had left earlier, leaving his sweet berries behind. 
berries are pretty tasty, but we'd have to check and make sure they were okay to eat, right? Hey, where is your home? Called out a frantic chipmunk. Don't you know you need a hole? Here, I'll help you dig. I'll make it big. A hole in the ground, wondered the fawn. He shook his head. But where is my home? Where should I go? I'm not ready. You are ready, Mother Doe spoke softly as she appeared out of the storm. You are ready for the first snow. Let me see him. Yes. Of the season. Come, follow me. We will travel with the rest of our family to the cedar swamp. There we'll find food and shelter and escape the winter winds. The owl watched from above as the small family of deer made their way down, down, down to the low ground where the cedar trees grow thick. Whistling winds and white snow, snow swirled and whirled all through the night, and then silence. The fawn woke up with deep snow all around him. The whiteness made him blink. Nicely done. You are prepared. You're almost as plump as me, said the fox squirrel, and that thick winter coat will keep you warm and dry. I love this picture. Look at that face. Aww. I know, right? As the fawn looked about, he heard the familiar calls of the winter birds, chickadees, cardinals, and blue jays. A calm came over him as he listened to the snow falling softly. Now he knew he was ready. He had found his winter home. He had heard his heart song. The end. But I hope it's not the end, because you know what? I want to hear from you guys. I want you to comment. Let me know what's going on in your world. What's your favorite season? That would be really important. So you can send me an email, you can write me a note, draw me a picture, and let me know. But before we go today, I think we need to do something with those snowballs, but I'm gonna get ready. So, make sure you like us, and make sure you subscribe to Book Buddy Barb. And now, we need to have a snowball fight! Yeah! 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 Bye for now!